there's really no one definition of a startup in the world and it can change through the years and some people understand it differently and so the challenge really is to how to turn that into a policy without being too broad at the same time it's not too specific welcome to hustle share the podcast that features the daily grinds of unique hustlers around the world to show not our differences but that our hustles are very much alike. Now here's your host, Ronster Beit Yong. Welcome to episode 21 of the Hustle Share podcast. My name is Ronster and I'm your host. And this episode is brought to you by Payroll Hero, a time, attendance, scheduling, HR, and payroll solution for Philippine companies. If you're new to the show, Welcome, we're glad to have you here because we have a very, very special episode today because for the first time ever, we're going to be talking about the hustle about a law. Not any person, but it's about the law. And we're going to be talking about the Philippine startup law. However, I'd like to give you a heads up because this podcast is for adults only. So if you're there are kids or there's someone who's not supposed to be hearing profanity, please make sure that uh, you're doing this in private and be responsible. Because we're going to be discussing a topic that will affect millions of lives because of this law that we just recently passed a few days ago. And that's none other than the Philippine Startup Law. And today we will have Mr. Carl Satinitigan part of the team who actually authored this law for us. Now we have a lot in store because in this episode we're going to be discussing why this law was even made, how it was passed, and what the process was to get it to where it is now as a law. But the most important thing about this episode is this, we're going to be discussing every single detail about the law and how it can benefit you as a startup. So here's just some of the things that we're going to be talking here. We will be talking about how you can get tax incentives, how you can get access to $1.5 billion worth of funding from the government, and a lot of other benefits that all startups and businesses can take advantage of. Carl will also share with us the struggles and the challenges they have to overcome to get this law passed. And most importantly, a law doesn't implement itself. So now that since it's passed, we will be also discussing what the next steps are so that it can now be fully implemented and startups can take advantage of the benefits this law brings. And as a final word before we begin, please do not politicize this episode because we're here to celebrate this big milestone that will benefit everyone regardless of your political affiliation. So if you're down with that and you're ready to learn the hustle behind the Philippine Startup Law, let's begin this episode right now! Welcome to the latest episode of the Hustle Share Podcast. This is so weird because for the first time, we're not going to be talking about the hustle of a person. We're going to be talking about the hustle of something that is not even alive, but it will change a lot of lives. So again, as mentioned in in the intro, we're going to be talking about the hustle of the Philippine startup. Is it now law or act? Law. Philippine startup law, right? We're talking about this because this impacts so many startup people's lives. And this is what this podcast is all about anyway, right? And and how you, what are the things that it would impact you for? What are the things you do and how we got here? But to help us out to get here, it's someone who's been there since day one uh, for this law. And we have here Mr. Carl Satinitigan of this, the team behind the Philippine startup law. Carl, welcome to the show. Hi, welcome everybody and uh, thanks for having us. Yes, welcome to Hustle Share. Okay, so again, this is so weird because usually I ask the, the guest the very first question is what's your hustle? But just give us some background, Carl, on um, what's your involvement in the Philippine startup law and how, you, how we got here. Sure, so I am part of the team um, in the office of Senator Bamakino. Okay. And we run 
different programs and policies in the in that office. Okay. And in the first three years of our term, we were focusing on entrepreneurship. Got it. Um, and we were committee of trade and commerce and entrepreneurship and okay. everything related about um, entrepreneurs. Yeah, because but, Bam was part of Go Negosho. Yes. That's how he was, he was big, again, pre-senator days. Yes. Right? He was very active in, in, in the go entrepreneurship movement yes. with Sekmon Lopez, correct, correct. with Joey Concepcion and whatnot. Correct. He was he was even the host of the show. Yes. Right? And as a social entrepreneur, prior to that he was he had a lot of experience um, building startups and building his own social enterprises mm-hmm. and mistakes from there. And so he felt that um, there are policies in government that we can change or we can improve so that more mm-hmm. entrepreneurs either get better access to government services or um, don't face as many problems as they already do. Yep. Um, and so we've been focusing on that space until in 2016, during the okay. 17th Congress, 17th we Congress. got another committee. It was the Committee on Science and Technology. Nice. And normally... Uh, so one p- innovation, I guess, that we've done in throughout this journey is when you do a piece of legislation, it, it normally goes into a, co- the committee that is closest to its subject matter. Got it. And one tip that we always tell people who want to pass a law is that you make sure that you're friends with the chairman of that committee. Okay. Because sometimes you don't, it doesn't get to your committee. Got it. And it's what, like the, 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 the what you do in class. Like, oh, yes. shit, I wanted to be in the glee club. I like to sing, but <laughs> I ended up in the math club. Exactly. Kind of thing. And so what we were able to do is to frame, because we were already in science and technology and mm-hmm. no longer in trade, commerce, and entrepreneurship, we had to frame the startup bill because we already knew that there were problems in the space. Oh, God. And we wanted to push for it. Right. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't have that committee anymore. So it would have gone to the committee on trade. But Got we it. said, what's nice about the science and technology committee even if no one uh, no other senator really likes it because they th- don't think it's <laughs> it's sexy or yes you know, yes like committee in science right and right right but my boss is a nerd and he loves science and yep. technology he thinks you know the philippines needs more of science and tech mm-hmm. and so what we do is we frame the problem into a science and technology prob- problem problem and so we looked at the startup bill and said hey this is a science and technology problem too And because of that, we were able to convince the Senate to enroll the bill in our committee and not in the trade committee. And that's a little tip for strategists out there who want to push for For a a policy innovation. um, Because if you have the chairmanship of that committee, it's so much easier to push for it. Um, Because you have control. Exactly. You get to say when it will get passed, etc. And you have to you have control over the consultation process. Mm-hmm. And how it started really was a simple one page bill. We just wanted to copy the Singapore startup incentive uh, for um, for their startups. Okay, what's in the sin- Singapore startup incentive? Because because they are like the the brass. Like exactly. they're like they're the they're the pinnacle. I mean, that's what we try to emulate, exactly. right? I mean, for me, for us in Chatbot PH, dude. First thing I did because uh, uh, the first my first startup failed, I incorporated in Singapore. You know how how hard it was to for me to incorporate in Singapore <laughs> overnight. Nice. I went there. I flew in. By the 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 Corsac met with me. Mm-hmm. We they we just, I signed some gazillion papers. The next the morning after is like, hey, you're incorporated. Nice. Like what? Nice. I, I can go. <laughs> exactly. So that's the gold standard. Per se. Exactly. It's a gold standard. And But what we, back then, this was three years ago, mm-hmm. the only part about the startup ecosystem of Singapore that we're familiar with was their tax incentive. They had a tax break for startups five yes. years old and below. And we yes. said, let's just copy that and let's see. And the other thing about um, working in the Senate is sometimes you don't need to have a perfect bill right away. You file one that is ready for um, dialogue with the sector. And so we just filed a one-pager bill and said, okay, this will start the process of dialogue with the startup Mm. community. And that's what exactly happened. When people found out that we filed that bill, they gave their feedback, of course, and we learned Mm. through the years that more than a tax break, the community needs so many other things. Oh my God, yes. (laughs) Let's talk about this one by one. So what were those things? Because obviously there's a why. Correct. Right? Aside from the tax break, which if if you're trying to... Uh, Singapore, uh, copy Singapore. Uh, based on what I know, again, this is not accurate, but what I know, the first three years you can't be taxed if you're not making over three hundred thousand US uh, SGD. Correct. That's a ton of money. 
Correct. That gives you a lot of breathing room to reinvest that money on things that matter, payroll, scaling, whatever. Correct. But other than that, um, what is the why and how did you expound on what that original version was? So the original why was to provide a simple tax incentive. Got it. But as because of their as you, as part of the title of the show, there's a hustle that has to happen. Absolutely, and you have to negotiate with important players in the in in, the, in government and in the sector. And what we learned was that if we were going to push for a tax break mm-hmm. at this climate at this particular time in our history, it'll be extra hard. Uh-huh. And so we decided to focus on other things that were equally important for the sector. Okay. And so they pushed, and we could talk to about this um, in greater detail later, but one of my favorite parts in the startup law, that okay. is, it's now law, um, is access to talent and and free flow, encouraging the free flow of talent. Because oh in the God. Philippines, yes. we need more founders, employees, etc., yes. investors. And they're not necessarily Filipinos. But nope. it's so hard to bring them here and convince them to, to start a business. Mm. And so one of my favorite parts in the law is a startup visa, for example. Ah. Um, another part that is not a tax break, but we thought, of the community thought was equally important, mm-hmm. is the startup grant fund, which basically provides... The Department of Science and Technology and two other host agencies that we can talk about in greater detail, mm-hmm. uh, legal backing to provide grants to startups because technically they're already doing it at the moment. Yes, um, but they're it's treading on. Area. Yes, right. because one is they they can only do so little because funds are limited. Right. Plus, they're not so sure about the legal backing of it. They're Got not because the law. At the moment, prior to this startup law, right. isn't so clear about whether they can actually yep. do that, um, and so they're always at the mercy of the commission and audit, always yes. checking if they're really following. And then the they're going to be get the, they're going to be accused of corruption. Exactly, and, and where is this money going, and why is this right. going to a startup, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. This law finally says that. UST and two other agencies, which is the Department of ICT, okay, the ICT. and the Department of Trade and Industry, mm-hmm. they are now allowed to basically mm-hmm. put up grant funds for startups. And okay. that basically, that's a core component of the law. But later on, after the first break, we will be talking to that in detail and how people sure. can access that and whatnot. All right. So just to give credit where credit is due. Um who was behind the law aside from Senator Bam? Because this you can't just be a one man team. Again, it fell into his committee. Great. But it can't just be him, right? <laughs> He's a busy man. Yes. Right? Um, how does how did that process come to be? Sure. Um so Senator Bam is the principal author and principal sponsor of the startup law, but we engaged the entire community on this one. So Got we it. worked with, first of all, the Department of Trade and Industry. They're mm-hmm. always very supportive on, of entrepreneurs. Secretary Mon Lopez has yep. been a great, great partner in introducing reforms in that sector. Yep. Also, the Department of Science and Technology. They've been mm-hmm. supporting startups, but because it's... In, it's it's just a new space for them. Yeah, They're yeah. Used to working with inventors and scientists and engineers, um, they've been looking for additional legal backing so that they could do much more work. Yep. And the Department of ICT, so Yusek Mon Ibrahim is our yep. biggest supporter from that um, mm. department, and they've been doing all sorts of activities. Yeah, to they've promote. been doing this since 2012 ish. Exactly, like it's exactly. been there for a long time. And yeah. plus our friends in the startup community itself. Yep. So people in Idea Space, in Kickstart, yep. in Plug and Play, in Launch, Launch Garage, Launch, right. um, all sorts of people who have a lot of experience um, building startups mm-hmm. and helping startups. And they gave a lot of feedback. We didn't, we weren't always able to turn it into a policy provision. Absolutely. Because admittedly, right. I mean, it's part of the hustle. Not mm-hmm. everything that um, the sector needs can be addressed by policy. Yeah. And there are other bills or other ways to solve those problems. And mm-hmm. we can discuss that in the next steps later. But okay. in terms of issues that can be addressed policy-wise, I think we are able to cover most of all the issues that were raised. Got it. Aside, and is there any other legislator that helped Senator Bam here? Because, I mean, if, if correct me if I'm wrong, based on my understanding, uh, a law usually has to go through at least a couple, four steps, again, g- generically, but you, we can expound on this, right? It goes to the lower Congress, which is the camera, whatever, if I'm not if I'm saying <laughs> yes. my social studies teacher will kill me if I fuck this up, right? Second is it goes to the Senate, right? And then after that, it goes to the Senate, president, and then after that, it goes to the president. 
it's almost correct, but just a little tweak in the beginning. It um, any bill can start either from the lower ah, house or the upper house, except it. for tax bills. So okay. tax bills originally um, they always have to start from the house. Okay. Um, but any other bill can start from either. And so in in this case, it started from the Senate with our bill. Okay. And when it went to so because we were chairman of the committee, we were able to say that okay, this we can start now the process of consultations and okay. technical working groups, etc. Mm. It got into first. Uh, reading, which is like mm -hmm. the first pass in the Senate, and then mm -hmm. all the other senators give their feedback, okay. and then it goes into second reading, and then third reading, and it gets passed in the Senate. What okay. happened was it passed in the Senate first, nice. and because it got it usually if a bill gets passed in one house or the other, right. the other house will then say, oh, it already passed there, maybe it'll be so much easier to pass it here. Mm -hmm. And so because that happened quickly for the Senate version, our friends in the lower house were able to say, okay, I want that too. And so they were able to file their own version and it went to first reading, second reading, third reading there. Nice. Until eventually last February, both, passes, uh, both houses passed the bill and so, they were able to come together, which is the final wow. legislative part, which right. is the bai can. And but, they come mm -hmm. up with the final, final version of the bill. Mm -hmm. And then it gets enrolled, meaning it gets passed into Malacanang. Got it. And then the, we're now expecting any day now, hopefully, that the president will sign it into law. Got it. So when you say when it comes from, because the last time we, we I, or the first time I actually met you, you were in, in giving an update around, what was that, February-ish, mm -hmm. right? You were talking about, like, all right, it's now with the Senate president. Uh, it's going to be passed into the president's um, desk. But yeah. we all know at that's this climate, everybody's busy. It's campaign season. Correct. It's the name of the game, right, and, and whatnot, right? But you mentioned that once it goes to the president's desks, right, It there's two options. It's either he signs it, it's official, mm -hmm. or it can lapse into a law. Correct. Where are we now? So... Technically, the bill has lapsed into law already. Okay, so it's a startup law by now. Correct. But it's not yet implemented because it's still up in the air. But okay, technically, step one done. Correct. Got correct. It. So April 26 was the day of reckoning. There um, you go. And that would have been the day that the bill has lapsed into law. Mm. And so any day now, Malakanyang can officially announce it um, that it's now uh, law. Okay, got it. Now... Let's take a break. Sure. Because uh, again, let's let's. It's all fun and games and whatnot. But before that, uh, let's take a quick break and let's talk about the nitty gritty. What's in this law and what can startups and what can businesses uh, benefit from? And more of that after the break. Hey, hustlers! Let's talk about something really important, real quick. Something that a lot of you I know can relate to, especially if you're running a business. And I'm talking about payroll. You know how hard it is and time consuming this is, especially that you have to do it twice a month. And as a guy who's been running tech startups for over 10 years now, this is something that I did not enjoy doing at all. It's not like it's because I don't like paying my employees. No, but it's already hard looking for funding to fund for your payroll. And then it's so much more harder if you're doing this manually. Luckily, I've found something that I highly recommend that you try. And it's from our friends from Payroll Hero. And here's how Payroll Hero works. They use your employee's face as your primary biometric to avoid buddy punching and ghost employees. So unless your team can figure out a way to swap each other's faces, tracking time and performance will never be your problem again. Payroll Hero is also very consumer friendly because it's also based on web and mobile and it's also cloud-based so you never have to worry about your clunky old biometric machines. So now you can automate time, attendance, scheduling, HRIS, and a payroll platform wrapped all in one. We have a very special bonus for you hustlers listening on the Hustle Share podcast. All you need to do is go to www.payrollhero.ph and use the promo code HUSTLESHARE to get a 60-day free trial. That's technically four payrolls that you can do all for free so you can see how it works for you. And the beauty about it is there's no upfront payment needed to do this. So never worry about payroll again with Payroll Hero, optimizing work productivity with happiness.
And we are back from the break. We're still with Carl Satini Tigan of the Philippine Startup Law. It feels so good to say it's law now, <laughs> officially. So I'm, I'm, we're not uh, um, like guessing if it's an act or a law or a bill because th- those are all wide, weird stuff that, that people need to understand. But again, this episode is here to dissect and talk about that in great detail as much as we can. So Carl, quick question. So... It's for it's a startup law, but yes. by definition, what did you guys put as a meaning of a startup in there? Is it just tech people, or is it right. more vague and, and more um, inclusive? Sure. Um. So one of the le- many lessons we learned um, passing different bills into law mm-hmm. was it's very crucial to have a form of definition that can withstand the test of time. Because okay. as many listeners to this podcast would probably know, there's no real. There's really no one definition of a startup in the world. Yeah. It can change through the years, and some people understand it differently. And yep. so the challenge really is to how to turn that into a policy without being too broad. At the same time, it's not too specific. Right. What we were able to come up with was a model where um, it's broad enough such that a lot of people can participate, but enough specificity so that the host agencies, meaning DTI, DICT, and DOST, have, has, they have some leverage as to what constitutes a startup. Got it. When the times change, they can then deliberate about it. And so part of the process really is, so the definition at the moment is right. it's at any person or registered entity that has either an innovative product or okay. service an innovative business process or an innovative business model. And so it doesn't even have to be a new uh, product or service, but the way it's being done or the way it's being sold to the public or the way you capture value is um, new and innovative, then Mm -hmm. that could um, fulfill the definition of a startup. Plus, DTI, DOST, and DICT, they are mandated to put up a startup program where you get accredited. And so they ah, get to say... So there's um, a vetting process. Per yes. Se. So it's not automatically for all startups because okay. what what uh, our trouble with that was you wanted the Department of Finance and the Department of Budget and Management to have some trust in the system. That because is. otherwise anyone can just claim, hey, I'm a startup. Um, because yeah. we also didn't put a year. So originally ah. there was like five years. Or yeah, right, 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 right. But many in the sector felt that that's it depends on the industry it's not True. necessarily True. some industries take 10 years and you're still a startup yep. because yep. that's just the nature of the industry okay. and you didn't want to curtail that and so but you still wanted the people who handle the money to trust the process of course and so it can't just be anybody and so we felt that the best so far and this is a compromise we can change this down the road once we once we see how it works okay. but the compromise is you have an accreditation process with a government agency okay. you apply uh, we put it there that it's a super simple process okay. for example if you're already a graduate of an incubator an accelerator mm-hmm. then you should have you know some extra push and it should be easier for of you course. to be considered a startup but of course if you're just completely from nowhere right. might be it will require some um, verification and of some course. due diligence from DTI DOST mm-hmm. and the ICT and then but if you get that uh, if you hurdle that accreditation process then you get a host of okay. incentives and benefits it's technically involved. like your entrance exam in school exactly. right exactly. you know you can't just go okay I want to go to Ateneo or I want to go to USD Correct. and I mean I can't be calling myself an Atenean right <laughs> you have to pass some some mm-hmm. some vetting process and then now you're in, Correct. right? Once they're in, what's in it for them? What are the things? So you mentioned a grant earlier. How much is the fund like and what are the check sizes for them and what type of support do startups get sure. uh, for this? So um, again, right now, the, num- the value that was passed into law is at 1.5 billion pesos. So the each, B. Yes. Okay. So each uh, host agency has 500 million pesos to start with as a startup grant fund. They have the liberty to award as much as 1 million pesos to um, mm-hmm. any startup. Um, that fills their certain requirements. So and that's can, a grant, not an equity investment. Yes. That's okay. A grant so that's in, for those people who are, again, jargon, removing jargon, a grant technically is like... A, a price, correct, right? Correct. It, they don't take a portion of their company, but that doesn't mean that you you need more. Like in Kubo, right? Um, they have this incubation period, but you have to check in with them. You have to go through a certain program again. But there's three programs. Then we have to define those things, correct? Correct. So we again we gave the agency some leeway to 
specify what the process would be like and so we're excited because that process is starting and we can update everyone on that but at the moment the law mandates a 1.5 billion peso fund divided okay. into each of those government agencies and those are grants okay. um, which beefs up the existing startup program of DOST the other side to that is a startup venture fund a startup um, venture fund okay. so if the grants are in the startup grant fund the startup venture fund could host um, loans or equity okay. or other forms of finance that may evolve out of this process mm -hmm. and currently it's housed under the national development company of the department of trade and industry okay so, i didn't even know that even exactly. existed we also okay, just learned that? about it um, <laughs> okay. and apparently uh the past few years it's uh, it's, it's been under the Department of Trade and Industry, and this basically authorizes them to have a specific venture fund for startups. The mm -hmm. value is also at 1.5 billion pesos. But I wow. would like to just add that in the, the, these values, though they, to some they're big, to some they're small, and that could be an entire debate right, altogether. Right, right. But what we wanted was a number that we could start with. Yeah, and at least we have something now, exactly, rather than exactly. nothing. I mean, we, beggars can't be choosers, right? <laughs> true, at the true. end of the day, but we, we deserve this. And again, thanks for having this out there now. But again, we'll talk about how now, what's the next step? Because in reality, so this is what it's supposed to do, right? So it, this is what, other than the fund, what else... You said, you know, ease of business. Is there ease of business here and whatnot? What else do startups get now? Sure. So once you get accredited also as a startup in any of the agencies, the other um, part of the startup law is access to a faster accreditation and regulation process. Okay. So what does that one mean? Of, one okay. of the things that the biggest, one of the biggest problems startups face is they encounter so much regulation when dealing with mayors oh, or man. in city hall right. or permits for mm -hmm. all sorts of things. Sometimes even the, at the level of the barangay, they will require a clearance that you didn't yep. expect or you couldn't right. find online, but suddenly they demand A, B, and C. And so part of the, part of the plan is that in our, our, in a f ultimate dream is that any startup can go to a negotiation center. These are centers that are handled by D the DTI. Got it. And that Man, credit where credit is due. DTI is doing an amazing job under Secmon Lopez. Exactly. Oh my God. And the hope is that when, once you go to a negotiation center, you are partially shielded from all this um, uncertainty in regulation because the business counselor there, as mandated by this mm. law, should be able to assist you in terms of accessing these kinds of permits. Got it. And the other part is because there's also uncertainty in the cost of of uh, starting a business or yes. doing a business, even closing a business. Right. Part, of the, part of the mandate is that um, the agencies can also subsidize or um, refund any cost associated with starting a startup. Wow. Because right now, um, we were inundated with complaints that sometimes... So, sometimes it's so easy to get a permit, but you have to pay a certain amount. Yeah. And that amount and can if you're vary. not liquid, good luck. Exactly. Right? And worse is, you don't even know what the real amount is because they have the power to <laughs> yeah. um, say that it's this much in this town, right, right, in my right. city, it's There's this no much. There's no standard per Exactly. Se, um, right? And it, sometimes it's not even on paper because on paper, the citizen's charter will mm. say that it's this cheap and that it's right. this easy. But in practice, they have some leverage into adjusting. And that's where a little bit of, again, I hate to say it, but that's where the red, red tape will now come to play. Exactly. Because again, it's so vague and, and ambiguity always, always creates stress and, exactly. and chaos. Exactly. And ultimately, right. we believe that if it's government's fault, it's government should be paying for it eventually because, yeah. you know, it's, it's government's fault. Um, and so we're basically transferring from one part of government to the other uh, these costs and unburden the startup founder. Um, and so that's, that's one major part of the law. Another one is access to visas. Visas. Um, so, okay, now we're talking about talent. Yes. Okay, let's call a spade a spade. All right. Um, a lot of the local startup founders here are mostly not yet ready for a big time play. And that's why a lot of also foreign talent, again, credits to them because they're raising the level of competition. <laughs> True. Perfect example. Ron Hose of Coins.ph. Yes. That guy came from Israel, whatnot, traveled all over the world and, and um, settled here. Exactly. And look at us now. We got acquired by Gojek at a mm -hmm. very good valuation. Mm -hmm. And in that report, like, oh, but he's not Pinoy. But dude, <laughs> he fucking put our, our 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 system on the map and employed so many people and changed the way people pay their bills now. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't matter. 
So we need more Ron hoses. Exactly. Right? Because also, our education system isn't yet at the level where we can expect talent right after no. graduation. And that no. will take time. And while we're waiting, it's, it's, it's important that we you know, welcome engineers, scientists, talent, top talent from other parts of the world who actually want to come here. I mean, we've right. been to many places where they actually are very interested in our space because it's a good place to work in an emerging country while at the same time they don't have to worry about language right yes um but if it's so hard then we won't be able to um, invite them in so the idea is there the bureau of immigration has agreed with our version in that they, you could get a startup founder visa or a startup employee visa so if you want to mm. work for a startup but you're not um, local and a startup investor visa wow okay so again in in one of the episodes here you know uh one of my uh, uh one of uh, the Southeast Asian investors in Golden Gate Ventures detailed why they don't invest in the Philippines. So that that's the Michael Lentz episode. And again, it showed that it's so he's a business and whatnot. Exactly. And you know, so many vague, so many, so many hurdles. Correct. It feels like a s- such a, a, a drag. But now with this, that's that's us reaching out to the whole region Correct. because we feel like an, we're a hermit. We're we're right. outside the circle all the time. And now this is an extension of of the hand to get exactly. That and if you read the literature, so part of the journey of putting the startup law was reading also what other um, startup ecosystems are up to. If you look at what they experience, and not, this is not just like the big you know Silicon Valley, types. right, right. There are other startup ecosystems that we can emulate. And what they always say is that more than just capital or more than just um, you know, access to the academe, for example, it's really the free flow of talent that encourages um, growth in their startup ecosystem. And so that's one part of the free flow. The other part in the bill is, in the law now, is right. encouraging more Filipinos to learn elsewhere and come back. And so not necessarily yes. to study because that, that requires some investment and startup founders don't necessarily have the time. Yes. But we get a lot of um, letters from different startup founders that are invited to competitions, to conferences, yes. and it's a good opportunity to learn to network etc but they don't have the funds to travel they don't have the funds to pay for the conference fee etc sometimes in the past few years the OST and the ICT would have some funding to sponsor these events but they're always you know very partial and very little is available but this time the law gives them full legal backing to do this and gives them enough up um, to how much um, well, we, that hasn't been specified yet. Okay. So the IRR should specify up to how much would be allowed. What is but, the IRR? Sorry. Sorry, the IRR is the Implementing Rules and Regulations. Got this it. This is the part where um, the department, the host agency, technically, right. exactly, will then detail the more specific parts of the law so that it's easier to amend out. Does line. the IRR exist yet? Not yet. So okay. the agencies are currently drafting it in okay. the... Two months ago, they've agreed to start that process. Okay. Um, I would say it's a relatively easier process. Mm-hmm. Um, the tricky part is making sure that other departments al- uh, agree to it. But I'm right. very, fairly confident that with our secretaries in DTI, the ICT, and right. the OST. And of course, collaboration and exactly. uh, what we'll have to do. And we'll discuss more of that later in the third part. But now, yeah, yeah, I would have to echo on what you said. Because, you know, if you go to the conferences right you know uh, we're the only country in southeast asia at least like you know tech in asia there's jakarta there's japan there's whatever even cambodia and vietnam everybody's getting shit there's no international conference that's happening except for e27 so thanks to the e27 guys because they're doing that here Mm -hmm. every year still since 2012 and whatnot and if you go to like regional conferences dude i can name only in one hand, how many Filipinos exactly. are there? And it's exactly. a shame because you get so immersed in the type of innovation that's mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, if you don't have an idea, but if you see an idea that's being yeah, done exactly. in Vietnam, it's like, all right, I can do that here. Correct. Right? Correct. And you meet people and you can collaborate with them and you get to network with them. And it could be an investor, it could mm-hmm. be a future employee, or it could be a co founder even. Right. And so, unfortunately, in the past, it's been very, very hard. Um, but now, this provides that legal backing and we hope to see more Filipinos go outside the country and learn and come back and then right. share what they learned to other and Kat Chan of, of Kubo and Earl Valencia both uh, said that and again in past previous episodes that you know immersion into these types of of, of ecosystems and, and whatever will then be Correct. critical to putting back in because if you're just looking at your own backyard all the Correct. time that's it. Or oh, you see a car- carabao. Or you see a <laughs> pig. It. Not we'll that, always right? be stuck with the same right. business can, models. Exactly. But there's no shame in doing that. And I appreciate that now there's that, that 
that that clause to mm-hmm. get that out. Other than this, Carl, is there any other little thing that we we should also know? Sure. Um, so the other thing that we learned the past few years was that any business or industry that has benefited from the eco zone. Um, model in the Philippines. Okay, what's an echo zone so an model? An echo zone under the Philippine Echo Zone Authority has been um, you know recognized as a new way or as a very effective way of ensuring ease of doing business. Is it the PESA? Yes, okay. that's the it. PESA. Called okay. PESA zones. Um, and one major reason why the call center industry is thriving is because yeah. they were able to unlock incentives for that sector through PESA. Ah. And they have a lot of innovations there. For example, that you don't have to register an entire industrial park or an entire building you can just register a floor as an eco zone and then oh. you get access to their benefits and uh, in, uh, incentives okay. and so one little provision in the law is that if you're a startup player and you want an eco zone because maybe you are multiple startups for example or okay. that you like an incubator or a co-working exactly, space whatever then you can get access to these um, uh, incentives now the incentives of PESA change every year and I'm not okay. super familiar with that sure, but sure. what I know is that they're very highly regarded. Like people love them. Um, wow! And so, if we get access to that through the startup eco zone provision, then I think that all the more it'll be easier to do business. Because one of the things that um, and the former PESA uh, chair used to say this: instead of uh, red tape, they give you the red carpet. And there so, you go. <laughs> oh, that sounds so well. So nice. I hope uh, all the agencies or all the departments do that. Exactly. Right? Because if you're a PESA zone, chances are you're free from the uncertainty and the volatility that happens in the local political environment um, because it. of their mandate, because of the incentive package that they have. And so we Shielded hope... Shielded for it. Exactly. Okay. So we hope to unlock that for startups as well. All right. Thanks, Carl. Now, let's take another break. And when we come back, we'll now ask them, now what? So, all right. We, we got a law, right? So, again, credit where credit is due. Uh, <laughs> thank you for letting this happen. But the work doesn't end here yet. There's a lot of things that we need to be vigilant about because if we fucking turn a blind eye, things can fall into the cracks and you know what? The the laws are useless, right? Like a lot of laws here in Mm -hmm. the Philippines are there, but implementation is a whole nother thing. (laughs) So we don't want that to happen and we'll discuss that more after the break. Effective automation is the best way for businesses to stay competitive. And having a chatbot for your business lets you easily automate and optimize sales, marketing, and customer service in the digital age. Chatbot PH will build, train, maintain, and market your chatbot across all messaging platforms. Our team uses the latest AI technologies to enable you to better serve customers 24-7, 365. Set a meeting with us today. Message us now at m.me slash chatbotph. And we are back from the break for the last part uh, to discuss the startup P no startup not startup PH, there's a fucking group. The Philippine startup law. Ooh, that feels so good again. It'll never get it'll never get old saying that. <laughs> but again, it's a law. Laws do not implement themselves, right? Exactly. Just like how laws are, you can just fucking put that in a piece of paper. But if people don't know how to interpret it, heck, even our constitution get messed up majority of the time, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's always subject to interpretation. Mm-hmm. Um, what's next now, Carl? So it's a law. It's been sure. lapsed or has it been signed? Uh, we don't know yet. Mm-hmm. But again, for all we know, officially, it's a law. Yes. In our hearts and minds, it's already lapsed into law. There you go. <laughs> so we can confidently say that. Now what? Sure. So, like you said, um, laws don't implement themselves. The next part of the process is the confirmation of an implementing rules and regulations. The IRR. Or what they pe- right. people call an IRR. Um, that is led... Um, so, the host agencies are supposed to lead that process, but okay. they are also required to consult with the community. And okay. so, thankfully, the ecosystem co- has come together and said that they will work with the agencies to build this uh, implementing rules and regulations. Ideally, they have a month to work on it. Okay. But, um, when did that month start? That started when the bill passed, lapsed into law. So April so that was 26, April 26 and right. then May 26. Um, uh, but sometimes, of course, it depends on the law. Of course, sometimes of course. It takes and forever. there's election. So yeah, exactly. let's just give it, give it, just give it a little <laughs> bit more patience. So exactly. chill out. But we got here already. Correct. Right. And what we're confident is that there are 
people in the in these government agencies that are super super into startups and the community of course. and we love them and they love the space and so we are very confident that they will be able to finish this process and right. once the IRR is complete the other part that you have to make sure is that it's budgeted properly every year Okay. which is an entirely different process already also. Um, but that means being vigilant with the House and, and with the Senate and right. you make sure that you have partners there who are also believers in the ecosystem because every year they can then say, um, let's have more funding or let's have less funding for the startup ecosystem. So that's the other part. But the third part also, and it's just a simpler, I guess, next step is that you could always reach out to these government agencies. Okay. Um, if you have comments or suggestions or feedback. And if you do, we'll, we'll put it on the show notes. Carl will provide them sure. as well, just so that if you want to reach out, you want to be involved, which you should, mm -hmm. by the way, it's your civic duty <laughs> to get this done because Correct. we already got to this point, exactly. you know, the hustle, the grind, everything else, which we will discuss uh, a little bit more in, in, in a bit um, of like, what are the, the, the stuff that they had to go through um, but you should be involved exactly. because if you don't get involved and they come up with the IRR mm -hmm. and you don't like it it's your fault <laughs> okay True. that's it. It, it we should all because this is all for us Correct. I don't care what color you represent and whatnot you're black white blue yellow whatever right exactly. Exactly. this is for the Philippines and mm -hmm. finally this is here Correct. right now Carl just just curious like, it's all fun in games right let's let's remove the bear a little bit <laughs> started in 2016 why did it take so long to get past what were the challenges that we we, we we got here for sure so well one major challenge is that yes you it really helps that you have the chairmanship of the committee okay. but after first reading and second reading actually especially between first reading and second reading okay. you have to go through the legislative mill and mm. that means you have to make sure that all the other senators are interested are not necessarily super interested but okay. enough that they will allow you to sponsor it on the floor Got and it. unfortunately sometimes it's not the priority for that particular year and so yeah. one reason why it has it took us so long from from 2016 to 2019 was because even if it was really fast in the Senate, for example, mm -hmm. it wasn't as fast in the House because they had other priorities. Right. There had some leadership changes there. Yeah, well. which was big, by exactly. the way, right? Um, and also sometimes uh, it helps. So what were, how we were able to... Uh, Overcome Finesse that. Yes, or, exactly. or maneuver. Exactly. Right. Is that it's it helps that you're always prepared because sometimes there are senators who really mean well and they really like your bill, but they know that it will be too expensive or that it will be too hard to implement or that the particular uh, department will just veto it and, and, and fight against it. And so sometimes... And I, I can name some of the, I mean, we know some of these senators. They really mean well. They just want you to improve the bill. Got it. Uh, but if just you're like not the prepared, check and balance exactly. in it too. Right. But if you're not prepared to answer their questions or to get an alternative provision that the community still likes, then slammed. it will just stall and it yeah. will just be forgotten. Got and it. it will just, you just have to start all over again every three years. And so thankfully, um, well, my boss and, and the team behind it was always prepared when they had really tough questions. Okay. And so that's how you overcome that. Also in the lower house, when they had to uh, push for their version, they were able to learn from our um, lessons in, in the Senate version and they okay. were able to more or less come up with a similar bill and came up with a version that we all liked. And so I guess that's one way to, it doesn't, it, it doesn't hurt to prepare. Of course. Now, in the people aspect, I mean, I mean, this is very uncomfortable discussion. I don't even know why I'm asking this, <laughs> but you know, there's uh, there's always an agenda that, mm -hmm. that that will you know come into play because at the end of the day, this is politics, mm -hmm. right? Um, how did you overcome that hurdle? Because this okay. is again, we're 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 in a unprecedented time where the divide is so much that oh my god, this, I've never seen this mm -hmm. in recent memory. This this kind of divide. How will you able to overcome that? That you know, at the end of the day, it's all encompassing everybody, mm -hmm. right? Regardless of what you like or you believe in. Correct. Right. I guess one of the things was that the bill, the bill when it was filed, it didn't sound alarms. It doesn't sound like mm -hmm. a major industry push or like an overhaul of an existing system. Got it. And not a lot of 
I would say, and they can correct me if this is wrong, but I would like to believe that not a lot of them really understood what startups were. <laughs> okay. So they were like, yeah, right, startups, right. it sounds small. It sounds like a token industry. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to affect my whatever I'm going through. Got so it. I think they that if you underestimate a sector, I right. guess... You're not worried about its effects, and so we didn't really encounter. Flew a lot under of, the radar per se. Exactly, especially right. in the Senate, we didn't encounter much resistance. Wow. The questions really were again were about implementation. I mean, of the few senators who understand the community, their okay. questions really were more about funding the right kind of tax or non-tax incentives, um, mm. the right kind of implementing agency, etc. So more technical questions really that we're already prepared to answer. But okay. there was it's not it's not a field that's controversial like i don't know sugar farmers or um call centers right. or it, or anything that would impact a lot of like physical lives exactly sure. and so right. i i guess that helped okay. because it doesn't seem controversial and since it isn't then there there weren't a lot of questions got it like a quinjet hovering exactly. over the, the other thing right. is um every congress will always look for a success story Ah. And so if you're ready with a version that everyone likes, or at the very least, no one dislikes, okay. um, and then they're like, oh, we need, a, we need, a, we need another um, law that, is, that we could you know, announce at the end of the year okay. that is already passed. Um, okay. And if you're ready, and this is, we've, always, um, we've always tried to, uh, what do you call this, seize this opportunity. Sure. That we're always prepared with like a bill that's almost right, new right, right. to be passed. And then when, when somebody asks, and usually somebody will ask, oh, are there bills that are near and that we can just pass already? Mm. And we always seize that opportunity. And we always say, right. oh, the science. You're just eager to like, all right, let's <laughs> exactly. find this shit. Let's exactly. go. Because right. some other bills are more controversial oh, or yeah, more yeah. Um, tricky. And we're always prepared with less tricky bills. And this startup bill in particular, especially in the Senate, wasn't mm. that tricky. Okay, now on, I'm just curious. This is a personal question I wanted to ask. Behind what we see on TV, the bickering, the, the, the shit that we see and whatnot, mm. is it really like that behind closed doors when people just want to work together in the Senate? Or is it more professional and, 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 and how, how do they communicate? Surprisingly, I've, I mean, we've enjoyed working with even the senators that have a bad image on TV. Really? Um, because they're very, when it comes to policy, they're very professional about it. Nice. They, they will raise the right questions. And if you answer them properly, they will not. Of course, I'm speaking of most of the laws that aren't exactly controversial. Of course. Um, but it, it's a different topic when you talk about the budget, for example. Ah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You know, crazy. Topics Shit's going to happen for sure. <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, but for the most part, especially laws that are not controversial, everyone wants the best version of the bill. Nice. And so... If not the senators themselves, usually the, the people behind them, they're always they always mean well. Okay. Um, and when it's behind closed doors, they always it's usually very positive and very constructive. Now, in terms of the team of a senator, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's very important because again, each one of them come from different backgrounds. Right. How key for us, especially coming from your point of view, right? How's the involvement like in equipping the senator with the right right kind of stuff? Because sure. you don't want him to make like look like a fool out there and make sure. say stupid stuff like and whatnot, right? Actually, team building is one of the things that I think is very similar to um, the startup journey. Okay. Um, because in the Senate, at least, because for the most part, when you work for government, chances are you will be working with an existing team. And it's so hard yeah. to uh, build your own because, you know, um, their positions usually are there for like forever. And so Unless you're a new them. senator. Or, uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the executive when you're in like a department. Ah, right, right. But when you're a senator, you you're get to build your own team. Right. And you get to build based on your interests, based on your sure. weaknesses and strengths. And so our experience for Senator Bam was that he started, he literally started from scratch. And he had experience from the social enterprise space, from the National Youth Commission, ah. from the former, uh, from our friends of, of former senators. And so he was able to put together um, different team players that we felt complement each other. Got it. And so it's very similar to a startup where you have some luxury in terms of choosing who you want to co-found with or who you want to start with. Um, and you don't have uh, baggage or history. Absolutely. With, like, like, it's a fresh family. start. Exactly. And then as you go along, you learn that, oh, you need more skills in this part. And uh -huh. so you hire differently. And then 
each team will have or each senator will have its own way of making sure that you complement the skill set of your senator. That's great. So, and that's also key in especially crafting the law because exactly. you can only do so much as a senator, right? And if you don't have the right team, mm -hmm. good luck. Correct. You're going to put in a lot of gibberish there. Correct. And then the first reading, this gets slammed onto your face. And that's great. All right. So thanks for shedding that light. Now, Carl, what else should we look out for? So, okay, IRR, after that, what's next? Sure. So we're hoping that well, as soon as the IRR is out, that the three government agencies will eventually implement the law. Sure. Um, we look forward to the startup development plan that they will formally, as a group, um, come up with. And then okay. that could be the roadmap. There are already existing roadmaps, but this one basically mandates that all three of them, the three government agencies, yeah. would um, align and make sure that their strategies are focused and Together with the rest of the community and the ecosystem stakeholders, sure. we plan really well for the next three to five years. Um, the other part is making sure that uh, the other problems of the sector are addressed. And so okay. one major part of that is ease of doing business. So yes. we're trying as much as we can to make it easy within this law, but that's not that's not going to be enough. Right. Um, you still have a lot of local governments that need reform but at least there's this law that you can now incorporate a single proprietor that's i mean a single incorporator so that's great exactly because i don't want to put my grandma or whoever <laughs> random right. people anymore exactly. to, to, to create a starting <laughs> five it's just always weird to give exactly. them uh now, that stuff other exciting initiative there I mean, we're, i'm still not sure if it requires a law but so far i think it just requires them to push for it uh, in the executive is to digitize the entire process. Nice. Have to go to Please. Singapore. Oh my God. Like in Accra in Singapore. Exactly. Overnight, dude. Exactly. Here in um, SEC, it takes two months at least. Oh my exactly. goodness. It should be. I mean, we know how to do it. It's just in a matter of making right. sure that it happens and that mm -hmm. each and every single government agency and local government actually agrees to be part of the platform. Yes. Um, so that's another initiative. The other one that we're very much in need of is our internet infrastructure also. Yep. We, the entire startup community could benefit from... There are heroes actually that we can feature down the road exactly, in the show that's super that exciting. are actually behind place that you don't know guys what's <laughs> going on right now. Exactly. But it went, once this goes out your 5 MBPS <laughs> will be a thing of the past i swear <laughs> exactly. to god and we'll have those those guys in the show very soon and there are some bills in our committee for example that we feel are very excited that could help in that regard as well right. for example in um dividing the the entire internet infrastructure so that you don't have monopoly over certain parts, right, of the eco, right. uh, parts of the pipeline because right now some companies have monopoly over certain things and that raises the cost um so those parts of the uh, those problems of the startup ecosystem that aren't addressed by this law okay. definitely can be addressed by other initiatives now just uh last few questions when you said amendments right i mean the version now of the law is is pretty like again v1 right what happens when you want to update it? Like, mm -hmm. does it have to go through a certain, like, say, same process or whatnot? Or you can just, like, all right, let's change this shit, put this. It goes through a similar process. Oh, wow. So it's crazy uh, difficult. Um, but, uh, well, one hope is that the implementing rules and regulations could accommodate those needs. So mm -hmm. that if you change the implementing rules and regulations down the line. And we also designed the law such that it has some flexibility. So you don't have to amend it. You just amend the IRR. Got so it. So that's, that's right, one right. Um, possibility. But of course, there are other things that we may need to really, really amend. So for example, if we really want to push for tax incentives. Sure. I've heard some people that um, there are opportunities, for example, in a capital gains tax, for example, yeah, yeah. so that um, older Filipinos can uh, better invest in startups. Uh, sure. That's an opportunity right there, and that requires an entire law. Of course. So that's not just an amendment, and, and but we're excited to do that. Um, hopefully, the climate in the coming years is that it, they're now more open to tax um, reform that is different from what they're pushing for at the moment. Dude, that is amazing and awesome. Again, Carl. Thank you very much on behalf of the whole ecosystem. This is a win, right? <laughs> yes, There's just yes. been, um, this is a big win and credit where credit is due. Thank you to your team. Thank you for letting this happen because we've been waiting for this shit. We've been going to Geeks on a Beach for fucking True. years and whatnot. <laughs> talking about this shit for exactly. like, I don't know, four or five years ago. <laughs> Finally, it's a reality. Yes. So it's, it's a good day because also lately, 
a lot of wins have been happening in the ecosystem. There's mm-hmm. more funds and whatnot. Correct. We gotta continue the momentum, exactly. not do a one step forward, five steps back, because exactly. that's a tendency sometimes. But again, this is a win. Yes. And I appreciate you sharing this uh, to us so that the listeners can spread this and you're informed. Correct. When you're informed, you can make better decisions mm-hmm. and you know that the government it's not against you, mm-hmm. but it's for you, regardless, again, if it's legislative or executive, the laws are there. Mm-hmm. It's there to, to help us out. Now, Carl, any last words for those people that, that want to uh, avail or check out the... Can you guys provide us like a like a soft copy of the law? And sure. We um, can, yeah, we can send you the... You can access it in the link in your... Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, in the show notes. Yeah, in this one. With you. Um, yes. And so, again, we thank you for this opportunity. Any, anyone who has feedback to the bill or to the law sure. um, you can reach out my, my email address I'll share it sure. with, the, with the podcast as well right. um, and yes we look forward to so this isn't a perfect law no right. law will be perfect but with the help of the community and the energy of the startup ecosystem okay. we are super actually- excited right everybody in the ecosystem is super excited again thank you Carl appreciate You're it um, thank you so much all right, and then again, guys, if you guys like this episode, please don't give, forget to give us some love. Subscribe because this podcast is made for you. I mean, there's no podcast out here in the Philippines that's actually supporting the startup ecosystem. I'm doing this because I'm part of, I'm one of you guys, and I'm just trying to pay it forward, right? Um, and again, if you like it, please follow, subscribe, and then share it so that people. And if you guys like any hustler or you want to get first dibs over who's going to be on the show, please don't forget to subscribe to our chat bot at m.me slash hustle share or just look for hustle share on messenger powered by chatbot page again carl thank you very much thank you okay and i'll see you guys in the next episode peace